Howdy everybody, it's helmet time again at Gorgeous Bikes. Um, now we didn't really mean this to happen, but it seems that we have become the centre for weird brands. Everything we sell in the shop, people don't really understand. They're all brands which have got some legend or misinformation about them. And there's definitely no brand more mysterious than Simpson. Made famous, of course, recently by the Stig. But that obviously isn't the Stig. That is obviously the Steph. There you go. Anyway, this is the helmet that the Stig wears. It's called the Diamondback. Um, maybe not the most fascinating thing to put on YouTube, but when you've been asked a thousand times or told a thousand times that the Stig wears this when it's a craft or the Stig wears that when it's a roof or the Stig wears that when it's the wrong Simpson we just decided to tell you once and for all that that is categorically what the Stig wears Simpson Diamondback it is also categorically not legal to use on a motorcycle that is also categorically very very cool these days this helmet is officially imported into England so there is actually no problem getting hold of one of these if you want to. Uh, also very usefully the price has dropped quite a lot recently uh, you're probably looking at around about 500 quid or 550 pounds with a dark visor or an iridium visor. It is definitely most categorically a car helmet. There's nothing really usable about this on a motorcycle and in fact the aperture is so small that if you want to see, if you want to look behind you, you've basically got to take your hands off the bars to do it. There's no way you can see anything except straight in front of you. This helmet is all about putting your harness on, looking straight in front and not giving a toss about who's just about to come up the inside. Anyway, so that is the top of the range available in England. Now, Simpson, as a, as a company, uh, has a very big range. The UK importer at the moment only imports four or five helmets. So if you've got an older Simpson and you're hoping to get spares off the UK, new UK importer, you might be out of luck. Uh, but at least there is now an official point of contact in England. So let me just show you the next one down from the Diamondback. So the next one down in the range in England is called the Speedway. Speedway is also very much a car helmet. Uh, a few people do buy these for drag racing, um, and it's it's similarly got a tiny aperture, but it, like the Diamondback, it is absolutely an amazing fit. Distinguishing features of the Simpsons are they are larger than average, being American. Nothing there is ever small. It's just slightly less big, so. If you think you're a medium, you'll probably be a small. If you think you're a large, you'll probably be a medium. Hardly anybody ever takes an extra large in a Simpson helmet. Uh, this one, the Speedway, typically retails for about 450. Some people give away the visors. Some people charge trade, which is about 45 quid. You could get it with a dark visor, probably for about 475. As far as I know, it only comes in white. Uh, the diamond back, however, the one which we started with does come in black as well. So Speedway is the next one down. That is also definitely a car helmet. After the Speedway, the nicest fitting bike helmet is the Outlaw. You can tell the difference between the Outlaw and the cheaper Bandit because this year and last year it has the speed ripples. Um, this is a feature of the later generation bandits. Uh, so, uh, later generation outlaw, sorry. Uh, the outlaw comes in matte black and white and typically it retails for about 395 quid. You're probably looking at 25, 30 extra if you buy the dark visor from the same retailer. If you buy the dark visor separately, you're probably looking at 50 or 60 quid. This has a much bigger aperture, as you can see, than the two car helmets, and it is, it is really designed to, to ride a bike with, um, and it's got the same lockdown visor mechanism, which is a bit stiff to start with, but very positive when you get used to it, which I haven't. There you go. Uh, visor changing is very simple. 
Um, inside it's quite nicely finished. Again, it's big for its size, definitely. If you think you're a medium, you'd probably be a small. If you think you're a large, you'd probably be a medium. It's a, it's a generous fit. And the, it's the, the best thing about Simpsons is the actual aperture is big. If you buy a bigger size helmet, you get a bigger size aperture. Sometimes on other brands that mimic Simpson, like the Craft Range, uh, these are the Craft Range here, which are uh, like a European version. Some of these, the size of the aperture of the helmet doesn't proportionally, isn't proportionally bigger for the size of the for the size of the shell. So you could buy an extra large if you think you're an extra large, and you simply can't get your head through. On the Simpson, that's not the case. There is a there is a definitely a proportional increase in the aperture, and they are very good fit in the larger sizes. That's the I would say that's the greatest dis, the biggest distinction between Simpson and Kraft is that the larger sizes in Simpson work really well, and the larger sizes in Kraft don't work so well. So Outlaw, black or white, and then the final one that's imported in the UK is really the entry level. It's the entry level uh, Simpson, which is the Bandit. You're looking at around 300, 325 quid for the Bandit. Um, some people might might give you a black visor for that. Some might not. the The thing, the thing that distinguishes it from the from the Outlaw externally is there's no speed ripples. Uh, it's got slightly smaller snout, and it does feel a little bit more basic inside. It's really the quality and the fit and the finish that's that's slightly different. You've got two vents here, which you don't have on the Outlaw. God knows whether they do anything. Probably not. Um, and it, again, same visor mechanism with the same push down over the stud on the on the left hand side. Inside, it's ostensibly the same as the Outlaw, but the shell just feels a little bit more basic. Um, Last we heard it was available in gloss black, matte black and white. Uh, occasionally there is only matte black, occasionally there's only gloss black, there's always white. So those are the four helmets that are officially available in England. Finally, the biggest myth about Simpson, there is definitely 100% unequivocally no European legal Simpson helmet. Not one of them has ever passed European or British standards or ACU standards. So there is a lot of myths on the internet about how one of these helmets was designed to European standards. That is the misunderstanding. One of them probably was designed to European standards but none of them has ever been homologated. So basically if you buy a Simpson you are buying a helmet that is not legal to ride either in the UK or on any European public road uh, and <clears throat> you have to take that decision whether you want to buy the helmet um, within those limitations. Uh, whether Simpson will expand the range in the UK in the next month or so we don't know but right now they've had a lot of success with these four lids. The quality has improved massively since we first looked at them a few years ago. And you know, if most of your motoring is done on the track or drag strip, or if it's not done on a public road, they are a good option. And specifically, if you need a big, need a bigger size, you there's no comparison between the fit and finish compared to Graf. Uh, if you need any more information, you can always call us here at Gorgeous Bikes 0207 351 If you need general information about Simpson, the importer in the UK is called Firestorm Distribution. They are the same importer for Kraft and they've done a great job with Kraft and they really know their stuff so there is a chance there may be uh, an expanding logistics for the older helmets. Thank you.